I am absolutely one of the people who wishes that TV shows came out weekly so that I weren't already late to making this video for a TV show that hasn't even been out for a week. Real content creator problems, I get it. We all have our preferences, but I love the weekly conversations. It bums me out. It's so much more fun to interact with people as something is ongoing and like get to hypothesize about what's happening. And now it's just all out there at once. And I just feel like I have to scramble to catch up. And you know, the good news though, everybody is that the Fallout TV show is very good in my opinion. It might break some law and we will get to that. I will be touching on that as a huge Fallout fan. But when I, I went to the premiere, actually, Amazon invited me to the premiere and it was awesome. I took my mom, which was extra cool because she still has this T45D Brotherhood of Steel power armor helmet in her house because I haven't yet figured out how to transport it to the US. So she's just had this giant fallout helmet just chilling in her house. She also has a bunch of the Vault Boy bobbleheads that I left there. So she recognized all this stuff. It was really cool. But I watched the first two episodes there and I'm now caught up. And even going into that premiere, I was really like uncertain. That's just the landscape that we're in. I'm a big Halo fan. You know what I mean when I say that. There are a lot of really bad video game adaptations. I don't feel like The Last of Us cleansed the palette. Like The Last of Us is a very good TV show, but it hasn't like forgiven all of the sins prior to it, you know? Like there's still, you're still safer to assume they're all gonna be bad and so I did. But in my opinion, the Fallout series is really, really good. From the first episode, I think you kind of see what you're in for. There are so many quick references to incest that I've, I've never seen incest jokes get played so quickly. And I've certainly seen people get really pearl clutchy about that. Like there are people on the internet being like, oh, what's with these disgusting incest jokes? But it's one of those things that I think this show does that I really appreciate. Not the incest, to be clear. I don't appreciate the incest. We don't, I'm gonna stop talking about incest. That'd be great. It does a really good job of, instead of being like, check out this reference to this thing. You like that, gamers? It sort of highlights a lot of the silliness of the game universe that is Fallout. It feels like you're, you're seeing creatives be like, man, this thing is really silly. How are these people supposed to be in this vaults for so long without having sex with each other? It's a great point. There's also with the Brotherhood of Steel, people keep making jokes about how these squires have to carry these giant bags, but I love that so much. Like. Even if it comes across as illogical, I love it so much because such a big focus of the Fallout games and such a big thing the community talks about all the time is being over encumbered and not being able to run. That is them just making fun of that concept. The way they use stim packs, that a stim pack is just something that magically heals all wounds, that they just, it just gets pushed into somebody and they click it and then their, their bullet wound is fine. Like I love that they don't spend time explaining that. God, it must've been so hard for a modern writer's room because everybody does this, which is just shouldn't be that way. But I feel like it's so that way with film and TV where somebody would have wanted to write the line, huh, that was easy. Or like, well, that worked. These things will fix bullet holes. They never did any of that. They just do the video game thing and you get to enjoy how silly it is. And then they just keep going. And I really, really, really love that about it. I also really love like as a broader thing, about this show, how so much of it feels to me like it captures the game experience. I mean, I think it looks very authentic from the jump. The vaults look incredible. The wasteland looks incredible. There's a ton of authenticity. There are moments that made me feel like I was playing the games. Like I had that sense of wonder. They captured the Bethesda leaving the vault moment. That's such a big deal in those games. And those big set pieces really do mimic the experience of the games. Um, but also the amount that they get distracted, like that you're supposed to be doing this like save your parent quest, which I also love. I've seen that be criticized too. I love that they went with the cliche fallout. You have to find your parent, but that they also get all of the crappy, stupid details about how easily distracted you are by everything in the wasteland other than that one task at all times. There's just so much authenticity there that feels like it came from people who played the game. And I think that that doesn't exist in a lot of these adaptations. And they really find it in this show in a way that I found to be really rewarding without, like I said, it being like too over the top, too overdone. Didn't have to explain itself every two seconds for the really dumb jokes that I think a lot of fans of the games will get. I also really like this take on the Vault Dweller. I think all of the performances are incredible, um, but there's such a nice juxtaposition as the show goes on between the people in the vaults and how innocent they are and, and how sure they are that everything that Vault Tech does is right 
You can't really make fun of the Vault Dwellers um, in the way that the show does in the games necessarily, because you're playing a Vault Dweller. You are the one getting out of the vault for the first time, so it's very different. But in the show, our Vault Dweller is so naive and so sure that Vault Tech is right, and it's... Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of that humor in, in the early Fallout games, across Fallout games in general, um, that I just, I feel like they really nailed the tone. They certainly nailed the violence. There's like some really fun Vats references. Um, just a lot of things that I found to be very, very, very delightful. And yeah, I think that Ella Pennell, who, who plays Lucy the Vault Dweller, is just such perfect casting for that Vault Dweller innocence, sort of stubbornness, like so righteous and so naive where it comes to the rest of the wasteland, like fantastic performance uh, across the board, but her especially, I just think she absolutely killed it. Even the way that they like tell you what skills she would have had at the start of the show, it's just so much fun. But of course she is not the only protagonist. We have three protagonists technically in what is very much a good, the bad and the ugly setup, which I think is like always one of my favorite storytelling trips. A group of people, different backgrounds, searching for the same object. The good is Lucy, the bad is the ghoul, the ugly is the Brotherhood of Steel in this particular case. It has to be. And the three are very, very, very different. I will say Maximus, especially somebody who really loves the Brotherhood of Steel and the way that they dealt with the Brotherhood of Steel in general is my least favorite part of the show. But that's really coming just from a fan perspective. And again, I will get to that and why yeah, I have I have things to say about that. Um, but I think that I really hold them up on like a certain level of esteem and always found them to be so impactful that I felt like uh, Maximus's disinterest in the Brotherhood. I mean, he's a fanboy, but he's not really there for the code. He wants to wear the armor, but he's not really about their goals, uh, at least initially. And I just, I just wasn't a fan of that in particular. And I think there are also other factions that I maybe would have thought that I would see more of alongside the Brotherhood of Steel, but I won't get into spoilers uh, in case anybody hasn't seen any of the show. But yeah, Maximus, like to contrast Lucy, is basically a coward. She should be afraid and isn't because she doesn't know any better. He's terrified because he grew up in the Wastes. He is not the cool esteemed Brotherhood of Steel member. He doesn't even really belong in the organization. And I do think I found him sometimes a little bit annoying or at least like the hardest to sympathize with. Very selfish character for sure. But again, personal preference. Uh, then of course we have the ghoul. He's especially interesting because um, of his backstory, at least initially. You see the ghoul at the very start of the very first episode of the show, pre-ghoul. Not a spoiler, literally the first episode, okay? Totally different perspective. He's 250 years old. He doesn't give a shit about anyone. He's like basically too old to give a shit about anyone. Maximus like deeply cares about his image. The ghoul, way past that. I would definitely say he has a shallower arc overall, but I don't think that matters for a character like this who is just cool. Like he's just really cool. The other two are not cool at all. <laughs> and I feel like the ghoul really fits the cool cowboy, doesn't give a shit, the shooting of the, oh, there's so many cool scenes. Such a cool show. It's also, um, in my opinion, very, very clearly really high budget. They clearly spent a ton of money on this show. It looks great. The monster designs look great. I love the use of the 1950s songs that always hit at the right times. Like the tone, ah, oh, so happy. I could totally go out of my way to pick some things apart, uh, but for the most part, it's just very fun, right? So that's where we get to the suggestion that it breaks law. In case you missed this, there's been a whole hubbub about how the law ties into Fallout New Vegas. There was an image shown on a blackboard in the show that I didn't even register that says that the Fall of Shady Sands was at a certain point in time, and then there's an arrow pointing to a nuke that kind of based on the years that things happened, a lot of subsets of the audience, and I think I agree with them, um, seem to think that the events of Fallout New Vegas were impossible. And to be clear, I get why people are annoyed by this. I don't like dismissing video game fans as just being toxic anytime they feel passionately about something. Like I, I sometimes they are, that's totally a thing. But I also really feel like there's a thing where it's such a strength of the medium that video games get us so involved and invested because we're playing through those experiences. Those are like our life experiences. There's so much more involved than not passive, like watching TV and movies are. And that's why you get a very engaged, very passive audience who gets very defensive of feeling like source material that they've spent hundreds of hours on feels like it was disrespected in any way. That's how I see this. So I'm not trying to tell those people that I think that they're uh, big crybabies. Again, some of them obviously are being big crybabies, but not 100% of them. Like I said, even not touching on it, I had some issues with the portrayal of the Brotherhood of Steel. There are some other things. It, I get it. I get it. But this is also something that I figured out a very long time ago. Let, let this be wisdom that I may impart to you if I can. <laughs> 
I used to read comic books all the time. I don't so much anymore, but uh, when I was like 13, I was going to the comic book store and I was reading comic books. And I got very into Marvel comics before even the first Iron Man movie came out. And I remember being very annoyed about Robert Downey Jr.'s casting. I like, I had a reaction that was like, how dare you not take this seriously? He doesn't look anything like him. There's no way he would act like him. Iron Man, Tony Stark has blue eyes. You could, you could at least try to cast the right guy. And this is a story that we see over and over and over and over again. People do this all the time. People were unhappy with the casting for Ellie, especially in The Last of Us TV show. People also had issues with Joel. Basically, I think any video game adaptation that exists, people will be very mad if the thing is not one-to-one -one the same. No TV show, no film adaptation, none of them are ever going to be the exact same as the thing that you've played. I mean, they can't, especially for an open world RPG, like a Fallout game where the experience is very much yours. I'm sure we've had very different journey through the wastelands. The things I did versus the things you did don't even add up. We have different endings. I mean, that's a thing we know happens in some of these games. And so I think the expectation for the outcome to be exactly the same is pointless. Like it's not just wishful thinking. One, someone will always be mad about something being different. And two, you could just go play the thing. I'm not trying to tell you that lore shouldn't matter to you if you're a person who gets really nerdy about lore. It's really just that a super commercial TV show shouldn't be able to break that lore for you. You do not have to count it. I really love a certain part of Star Wars. I really hate a certain other part of Star Wars. I have just chosen to pick and choose which Star Wars that I like. The other parts don't exist in my canon <laughs> and that's fine. There's nothing anybody can do to stop me from feeling that way. It's a way that I enjoy. I'm much happier that way. That is what I would implore you to do with this kind of show. They are definitely not actively trying to disrespect you by deviating from any source material, intentional or otherwise. They definitely want all fans to watch this. They do not want to disrespect fans. Like that's never the MO with this kind of thing. It's basically my stance, especially like where Halo is concerned. That TV show, doesn't even exist. It's just not real at all. <laughs> Never came out. Does not exist. But it's like even the Brotherhood of Steel stuff that I dislike and was like bummed about because it's not what I want from my built up version of this fictional faction in my head. I wish they had done something different. It's still like, yeah, but I still have all of those experiences from every time that I played those games. That feeling has not been removed from me. I still feel that way about that faction. This is about Maximus as a character and it's a very different story and it does not actually have any impact on every other memory that I have of the Brotherhood of Steel in any way, which also related. The Brotherhood of Steel looks so good in the show. So many things get armor so wrong. Like if we're talking about Iron Man, I feel like the CGI for Iron Man in those movies got terrible. The Brotherhood of Steel, I know it's a mixture of armor and CGI, I believe, and it looks sick. So good. But yeah, I think it's a really fun show that um, you can choose to pick apart and be upset at if you want to. But in terms of, in my opinion, nailing the tone, giving you the world without slapping you over the head with crappy cheesy jokes about it and instead having more subtle digs. They're not like super subtle, but it's just the restraint on some of the jokes. I really appreciate super violent, fantastic sets, fantastic costuming, excellent performances. I just, um, I'm just really happy overall. I think it's really, really fun.